And we're live. Welcome everyone to another episode of the Friendly Ex-Muslim Podcast. This is episode 105, 105. So if you want to listen to any of the previous episodes, they're all available on YouTube. And as well, they're also available on your favorite iTunes, Stitcher, Google Podcast, whatever podcast platform you like. So if you want to listen to this long form interviews, on a different platform where you can actually just walk or go for the walk or drive around. They're also available for your convenience on those platforms. So today I have a special guest and there's a lot of people looking forward to this conversation. Someone that I've known for many years, but never spoken to on my channel. And that is the the one and only Emily the Strange, right? Or Julie Jalabadi. Hello, hi. Uh, so today I'm joined by Julie and Maxi. That's Maxi right there. So uh, I think it's going to be a great conversation. And uh, Julie, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Awesome. Everybody awesome. So yeah, you haven't been, you haven't done anything like this in a really long time. It's been, it's been years, right? Yeah. It's been years <laughs> and uh, things have been, what, hmm. how, how have things been recently? Quiet for you? Yeah, yeah. I used to be more outspoken on, on social media a few years ago, and now I'm kind of quieting down a little bit. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Nice. So we're gonna yeah. we're gonna get back into it. We're gonna go yeah, back yeah, to yeah. the the history and everything. You have you have an amazing story, a really interesting story, and you've been around <laughs> a lot longer than me and ev almost everybody else I know in the ex Muslim movement. Oh, uh, okay. People in Malaysia, in particular, know you. Um, for your activism. So can you tell me about, like, just go back to the beginning, like, how did this get started? And like, what's your story? However much detail you want to put. Um, you mean like, um, how I... So, so, so let's, let's talk about like, like when you were Muslim, what happened? Like, how did you go from being Muslim uh, yeah. to having doubts? Like, where did it start? That's, that's a good place to start. So anyway, I, I remember that since I was small, like a, you know, te teenager, or even um, even uh, earlier than that, um, I've always been kind of like questioning, you know, ask, like asking questions about all these things, like in religion, like why this, why that, and that is what happened. Was it wasn't like a tragic incident? I was actually abused at such a young age, so that experience made me kind of. Um, um, I felt like I'm an outsider looking in, so like not really fitting in. So always questioning, like, uh, like why why do women have to wear hijab, for example, or or why do we have to, to like uh, the different roles between men or women, for example. So, but because uh, as most religions are, they tell you like, okay you know god knows everything you don't know everything or maybe like if you want to ask somebody you have to ask the right people you cannot you cannot talk about it because if you just talk among yourselves you might risk being a murtad or you know like uh, your faith might be tainted because if you're questioning too much mm. so but and how old were you how old were you at this time um teenager Okay. Late, late teens, uh, you know, but I was still, I was still a believer. I was still a Muslim, very much a Muslim. Um, and then I went to, uh, I was 18, 19, and I went to study in the U.S., in Colorado, actually. Um, and then, uh, you know, like I came from a small town. It's a, it's a, a very religious state in Malaysia. So going from that environment and then, you know, to the West, and then started to see, uh, you know, how everybody else live and then being, you know, like you always were taught that, you know, like, oh, be wary of infidels or the Jewish people, you know, like they, you know, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure you're, you're familiar yeah. with that. Many people can relate to this. And, um, and then like, uh, you know, you see the way how other people live, people of other religion, you know, like they're so different. Oh, it's not the, how we, you know, how we were taught. And um, one day I met like a, a Jewish person in my class. And I'm like, wait a second, he's nice, you know, like, <laughs> so, you know, all, all these things little by little, you know, got me questioning even more and more, you know. But at that time, this was back in um, 80s, 90s, you know, internet, 
was just starting so you know you don't really and then you know yeah you have the library but if you if you don't know where to go look for information then you don't you don't know what to look for um so anyway so i have all these questions i keep it in the back of my head you know and uh, i remember one time um in college i was invited to um to um, um a religious gathering for baha'i so i did and I, I think it was like a, a Baha'i is like a sect of, they, they think of themselves as Muslim or like yeah, a sect yeah, of it's, I'm not sure. It's weird, right? It's, yeah, it's kind oh, of It's weird. a new religion that came that has Islam in it or something. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about it. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, you know, I, I, I talked to somebody from that faith, you know, I was like, oh, this is nice, you know, but I don't know. I was still a Muslim. So anyway, so, so uh, and then... Uh, later on, we have internet, and by this time I was uh, it was like early two thousand, and then I started getting on YouTube and started listening to Dawkins, Hitchens, and uh, amazing atheists and who were all whatever you know whatever I could consume, you know, and um, and then I I met like a guy who's uh, well like uh, culturally Muslim. Uh, but no, he's, he didn't really, and he made me question even more and more. And then eventually in 2005, uh, you know, that's it. So and, cultural uh, Muslim made you doubt Islam? No, I mean, like in Malaysia, you cannot live Islam. So, uh, so in name, you're, like if I go back to my country, technically I'm still Muslim. Mm. So, but whatever you believe or don't believe how you live your life, that's something else. Okay. Um, yeah. So. So this guy made me question a lot of things, you know, like one day he said, oh, I don't think sex is a sin. I said, oh, you know, like got me thinking. And here I was, you know, like, like, uh, okay, I wasn't really a good girl or anything, you know, but every time I was doing it, you know, I always have this guilt, you know, but you still did it anyway, but you have this guilt, you know, but he made me question like, okay, you know, like, you know, sex, everybody have the, you know, you, you have the desire for it. So why God give us a desire and then make it a sin, you know, like, um, it's, uh, you know, God, you're thinking like, oh, I think like sex is being used by religion to control people, you know, like when you can control people, you control their minds, you can get resources, you get your money, time, whatever. So, you know, things like that. So, um, I guess my my journey into living Islam is not it's not something that just click one day and then you just leave. No, it was like gradual thinking. Um, 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 like when I was in school, you know, like it's always um, this fear, you know. Like um, uh, one time I was I went to a boarding school uh, as a teenager. So one time they said some people at night like coming back from a mosque or something and they saw something in the sky like sins of the uh, in the hell you know like women being pulled by the hand by their breasts you know like the those stories you know like and then the next day we stayed up and tried to look if there's uh, more of it you know like but it got me you know like it make you fear you know like and then you started thinking like is god nice or cruel you cannot be both you know and um um so but so you know your these things make question and then as i got into my 20s you know like i decided okay no i decided god is nice god is not cool <laughs> you know like yeah. yeah people make mistakes but you know it's like children you make mistakes but you know you learn from it and you try to better yourself from it and uh, okay so i decided okay god is not cruel so i just left left the cruel part and then like uh, uh god is nice and then uh uh, got into thinking, oh, you know, like uh, if you, like the Quranist people, so they take the good part, they kind of like left out all the nasty part from the Hadith, you know, and so whatever. So the Quran, Quran tell a few things, but Hadith tell a lot more things. Like uh, in Quran, there's no such thing about women having to wear hijab, you know, it just says lower your curtain to cover your bosom or something like that mm -hmm. but nothing about cover your hair so specific like in the hadith yes so at one point i, I wasn't really a quranist but kind of like okay maybe this is better <laughs> you know and then uh i got onto the internet um i started reading um uh 
about other religions, all kinds of religions and cults that I could, uh, I could find, uh, even like sects of Christianity, sects of Islam. Like, why are they broken up? You know, like there are, uh, uh, I mean, like what forty thousand, fifty thousand of different religious domina dominations, de denominations in the world. Like everybody think they are the right one. Yeah. You know, like how is that pos be possible? You know. Yeah. So, but uh, I read about a lot of things, Buddhism, Hinduism is like, uh, I couldn't really understand the thing, but, mm -hmm. but you know, mostly Christianity and Islam because they're so similar. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I never really, like so, so, some people, they leave Islam and they, they, you know, they got into something that less cruel like Christianity because Christianity have been reformed and today they are nicer than before than, uh, you know, back then. Um, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but back then they were really, really bad. Even yeah. Um, but anyway, I never really got into anything. It was just like a lot of reading. And then one day I just said, ah, oh, it's all bullshit, you know? <laughs> so feel free to stop me from talking too much. Oh, no, and this is good. This is good. No, I don't have any questions so far. Uh, so, so, so yeah. far you've gone up to your 20s. You've, you've, yeah. you've been trying to, so, so just to kind of, reiterate what i've been hearing what i've been hearing is you're you've you're young you were a young lady you're still a young lady but you were a young lady that was looking <laughs> and trying to um reconcile yeah. what you were feeling with what you were taught and what you were seeing which was contradicting mm -hmm. also what you were taught and also you know um you were starting to have issues with this idea of god being cruel god punishing mm -hmm. you know why is god so nasty and and you decided that you wouldn't focus on that part of the religion rather you would you would focus on the part where god is merciful god is loving and you know exactly many, <laughs> some, some people do this like especially sufis <laughs> they'll, they'll focus more on god is love um i remember i used to go to this one conference and we used to have a joke there's this guy mokta magrui i don't even know if he's still doing speeches or what mm -hmm. but like you could count the number of times he said the word hope it became like a joke we were like hope 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 hope, hope meaning love <laughs> oh, so like okay. he would he would keep saying like this word love like uh -huh. at least once every couple of sentences you know the love of allah and love we must love okay. the messenger it's all love 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 uh so they obviously they focus a lot on this part right uh -huh. and you're right that quranism is um you know mm -hmm. much easier to reinterpret <laughs> to make it mean whatever you want to uh mean there was this fun, funniest thing happened. There was a guy that called into the show that I follow, um, one of my friends, uh, podcast, uh, the Myth Vision podcast. And this guy was sort of a Quranist, but he had the most like absurd views of like, I've, I've never heard anyone say this. He said, Muslims are Christians and Christians. And like, he was, like <laughs> because the problem is when you don't have hadith, the Quran, you can make it mean anything. Yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. It's just like, what do you, what, what does this mean? Like, it, I, you, you decide, right? Yeah. And so this is no a complete book, you know? Like, I don't think it's a complete book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then, like, you know, we used to like, uh, growing up, you know, we used to laugh at other people, you know, oh, look at those Chinese people. They pray to a statue. What's a statue? You know, like yeah. it's not God. You know, like and then yeah. I suddenly one day I realized, you know, like oh, I believe in prophet. You yeah. know, like splitting the moon in two, and then you know, riding a winged horse to heavens and back. You know, like my religion is just as absurd as any. You know, <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> you're right. That it's we always. um it's funny when you see certain like two different religions i mean as an atheist it's especially obvious that none of them are from god and everyone believes but everyone's like once i saw a muslim and a christian arguing i mean it happens all the time about god and it's just funny because you know they're both wrong but 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 when you're in it you only think the other one's wrong yeah exactly right? you're like oh yeah. no only they're wrong i'm right yeah. like you said there's so many um different denominations or whatever um, not 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 that I'm making a comment about whether God exists, but in particular the religious, the different religious teachings, they just don't make sense to me. Any of them. Yeah. So yeah. So, yeah. so one day, you know, like, uh, but one one uh, one major um, uh, thing that happened was uh, in uh, 2005. Well, years before that, you know, like in in my family, uh, 
I mean, I don't want to be so cliche and say I'm the black sheep of the family or anything, <laughs> but I've, I was always like kind of like a bit rebellious in a way that, you know, like because in my home state, in if you live in the capital city in Malaysia, it's very modern, liberal, you know, you, you can get by, you can get away with anything. But in my hometown, you know, like my, uh, the people, the women there wear hijab and like uh in, in the big city, for example, they have separate cash cashier for men and women, or what? like, you, yeah, they, what, I don't what, know. What state is this or a city? Uh, Kelantan. Okay. It's been Kelantan. under under the rule of uh, uh, the uh, it's a Islamic political party. Like the rest of Malaysia, of Malaysia is more is uh, governed by more liberal party. But in in this state, it's been under passed for I don't know 20 30 years for as long as I could remember I mean they say that back in the 70s they were more liberal but um, in the 80s 90s uh, similar to the rest of the Muslim world is becoming more and more religious so yeah so every time I went back so my family they're nice people you know they're educated people my siblings but they were still you know, because we live in that community so we were affected by it you know like my mom would be like what would the people say you know like what would the neighbors say so every time i went back you know we would visit our fam relatives or whatever and then she would like here put this on you know like okay that that shirt is too tight here take my dress or whatever you know like and she's like pulling my shirt you know like oh that shirt is too short i can see your butt you know things like that <laughs> Yeah, so every time I went back to see my family, I felt this sense of guilt, and um, and my mom, she of course, she wants the best for for our, us kids, you know. She notices me, you know, behaving like that. She has her suspicions, you know, but I never really say it out loud, you know. Even though I didn't really believe as much anymore, you know. She would like in the morning, as would mothers do, you know, knock on your door, like five, six o'clock in the morning, like, wake, wake up, up. Ray. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I would like, okay, wake up, you know, pretend, make some noise, pretend that <laughs> I'm going to pray and then go back to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. but she has, a, she had a suspicions and um, so every time I went back, she would like be, you know, like give me the, um, you know, the thing that women wear to pray, she would give me that, okay, and then, you know, um, she would give me like bottles of water that's been blessed by somebody. You know, they did read the su uh, the Surah Yasin. And oh like, no, okay. I'm not familiar with this. Okay, I never, no, in Canada, I, I haven't seen this. It's kind of like um, it's animist, you know. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, they 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 would take uh, take it to like a religious person, like imam um, or something, and then the um you know they would read the surah yasin and they bless the water and then like if you drink it maybe your heart will be a bit <laughs> more pure you know so oh, okay. she would give me that you know like yeah. and you know like okay it didn't work you know? and then one day, <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work <laughs> you know it's, uh, it's, still... it's funny that now um just to kind of sorry to distract for a second from the conversation mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with covid we're seeing that all of these holy waters do nothing at all whatsoever <laughs> it's just like <laughs> even the holy water is making people sick now and like they had to stop doing yeah. some of these rituals with water because of, you know for the risk of spreading disease or whatever right so yeah <laughs> so anyway she would do little things like that you know bless her heart you know just yeah yeah <laughs> and um so um, and then one day, because uh, she, after my father died, you know, she, she turned to religion, you know, like, uh, well, I made her happy, you know, whatever. And uh, she would go to the, um, she would go to Mecca, like every couple, two, three years, she would go, you know. Um, and then one day she said, oh, you know, like she wants every, everybody to, to go with her, you know, all, all her siblings, you know, like, okay you know like so we started saving money to go whatever and then when the time came in 2005 um 
my brother lost his job and my sister just got a baby or something like that. So the only person who could go was me, my sister-in-law and my mom. I had no excuse not to go, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so wait, before you went at this time, you were, how would you define yourself? Um, were you still Muslim? Did you uh, question? Kind of Muslim, more agnostic than Muslim, okay. but I wasn't rid of the fear completely. I, w I was still scared that you know something would happen you know like they say oh yeah you you don't have pure heart you're gonna go there and the moment you step out of the plane a uh, lightning will come and <laughs> because you, you know, don't like, believe oh, probably you're still there you know <laughs> yeah but then uh my my boyfriend at the time told me you know like oh just go you know just just think in your heart you know if there's a god or god even though god knows your intention is not pure but just go that you want to go with, be with your mom and help your mom because she had like bad knees. Yeah. So, okay, okay. You know, like I felt better after that. So I went and, you know, nothing happened. No. But I'm I'm glad that I went. No lightning. <laughs> no lightning. You know, not even rain. <laughs> <laughs> it never yeah. rains over there. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, but but um, I was glad that I went though. Have you, have you gone? I went for Umrah once. Yeah, yeah, I went for Umrah, yeah. not the Hajj. Yeah. yeah. Because, um, well, first of all, I like visiting historical places. So even though I don't believe in religion, I still enjoy learning history and, you know, all how it happened back then. But, and I also saw like the way the people there behave and Medina and Mecca, you know, like, uh, um, you know, it kind of like transported you to, uh, when was that, 1400 years ago? <laughs> and kind of thought, okay, back then in this in this uh, environment, you know, like what happened and how it became like that. And then what makes you, what makes the, um, you know, like uh, in, 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 uh, in Mecca, I don't know about the rest of uh, Saudi Arabia, but in Mecca, at least during prayer time, everything has to close down, yeah. shops everything yeah. so every like supposedly everybody has to go to the mosque right there and pray mm -hmm. because it's just like 10 minutes walk or less yes and uh, and then they when they pray you know like um they read it out loud and surah the al fatiha you know like it's very simple it's mm -hmm. just basically repeating god is great worship him and nobody else that's it repeat 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 and imagine yeah. you do that five times a day yeah. you know like and then you also, uh, I also saw things like, and, and uh, this is confirmed by other people as well, you know, like in Mecca, I thought, oh, everything is holy, you know, everybody behaved nice over that. No, no, the, the, the people, um, like the shopkeepers, or, or even like when I, one time I was like circling the Kaaba and this guy was like trying to grab me from behind and my sister-in-law got sexually harassed and, you know, so it's like, okay this is supposed to be your holy place Allah you know like why do you allow these things to happen so they make me question and then and uh, and also like the whole thing is just about money you know it's um, yeah people need something to believe in a place to go for pilgrimage or whatever but imagine you know if those things that uh, doesn't exist how much money is going to be lost you know mm -hmm. so yeah it's a multi-billion dollar yeah. industry it's a religious <laughs> tourism it's like disneyland of Muslim exactly industry, yeah right? <laughs> um and and i do i do think that if this was sincerely you, you made a good point that if this was sincerely like a real pilgrimage there should be some some sort of charity involved that you don't pay like i remember when exactly, i went to Omar, yeah. we were paying 300 to 500 dollars a night for oh. the hotels it was oh. this was like outside of ramadan and ramadan is probably even more expensive but we were close to the haram and it was it was like 300 dollars us no canadian oh, wow. a night it was expensive. Uh, yeah <laughs> i mean we paid like you know per person several thousand dollars so it was quite a lot of money um but yeah you're like it's a big money and the funny thing is the quran says there's no harm in making money from Hajj. It actually says that. It says something. Oh, like that. oh really? <laughs> yeah, it says there's no harm in making business and this and that. So I guess they see it as okay. But yeah, they're definitely gouging. Like you, yeah. you will, that, especially for Hajj, because there's only one period of time you can go. So everything right, is super right. expensive, right? Yeah. Yep. So. And, and anyway, one more thing. Now, that, now yeah. that the oil is going away, 
it's becoming even more important the um, hajj yeah yeah people need a uh, yeah <laughs> the more people believe the more people go there the more they spend money on it you know i think yeah. i think any religion that asks you to give money is completely bullshit i'm for yeah. sure i mean yeah. I, of course <laughs> i think all religions are bullshit but yeah. the ones who ask you for money that's like you should know right away you know? <laughs> bullshit, you know? yeah i'm gonna highlight this one uh, comment uh, before you continue Okay. <laughs> my nages she's a fan uh mecca is disneyland of islam exactly yeah <laughs> with sex yeah. because yeah disneyland you don't have that issue and like the real <laughs> disneyland you don't you yeah i'm yeah. pretty sure you'd be safer in the real disneyland than you would in mecca which is yeah, you, at least you could report but over there oh, you were, that's true yeah yeah and uh, I, i i had a guidebook with me and um um it says that you know like yes women have re- have said that they have been yeah. sexually harassed but you know if you want to report be you know be careful because the police there might jail you instead mm-hmm. you know like so yeah because yeah, you don't have witnesses or something right for witnesses yeah, like, or something like that they just um, yeah <laughs> Anyway. By the way, everyone, uh, please like the stream. Give it a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and you're appreciating what Julie has to say. It helps the channel. Thank you. All right, and back you, to you. If you like Max, <laughs> thumbs up for Max. Thumbs up for Max. <laughs> Is it Max or Maxi? Uh, uh, Massimo. His full Massimo? name is Massimo Ariano. Oh, okay. <laughs> He's not my son. He's just my sometimes <laughs> son adopted. Oh my gosh! Oh, 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 <laughs> He's being defensive. Yeah. Right? My husband <laughs> said Massimo Ariano hyphen Mackenzie because that's his name. <laughs> okay. So, so anyway. sorry, you were saying yeah. So uh, if you can continue what you were saying. Yeah. So anyway, where was I? Um. Yeah, and I also noticed like one thing in Mecca. You know, like yeah, you're every you know like you're a regular person or whatever, right? but you go to mecca because of your your desire to be to be close to god to be you know like this is your chance you know you might not get this chance anymore you spend all this money and you're here you, you know so people who are normally nice people they go there and they become more you know i remember this incident and you know we were like we were in i think in, in medina you know that that mosque and they say like if you go pray near the mm. The, this the, pla- I forgot what it was, the, but it's like the, the, the road del Janna. What the, ro- the road del Janna with the prophet? Yeah, it's like the road is? to yeah, it's like yeah, yeah, straight to whatever. So yeah. everybody wanted to pray in the front, and uh, and then there was this lady. I was like, oh, I lost my daughter. She's six years old. Whatever. And then you know, like, and um, I mean, my mom was like, oh, don't 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 bother about that. You know, like this is. You know, like it's let's go to the front. You know, are you, you know, serious? Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, nice. I feel bad. You know, yeah. Mom, but you know, like she's a nice person, but like because you know you want to fight oh. for this chance, you don't want to get this chance anymore. And so, like, uh, you know, fuck yeah. other people. You know, like, <laughs> and uh, I would have, I would have. She didn't say anyone. that, <laughs> but I, it's as if you know, like everybody is doing that. You know, like. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. And so I, I just like okay, I'm going to the back. So I way, <laughs> I was way at the back, and yeah. then um, <clears throat> like going through, uh, going circling the Kaaba, for example. You know, like everybody wants to be to the front. You know, like yeah. in me, I want to be in the front because that the shorter circle for yeah. practical <laughs> reason, not because it's, you know. But it's like oh, I, you know, like fuck this shit. I'm going, you know, like ooh, whatever, where there's nobody, you know. Uh, and I, or I would go at two, three o'clock in the morning when there was nobody. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, but I, I noticed like you know, nice regular people, you know, they became more you know like selfish and just want to be in the front, don't care about other people, mm. things like that. So like, this is supposed to be a holy place, you know. You're supposed to be nicer, not you know. And uh, I mean, yeah, you would think that saving someone or helping someone's find a daughter would be more of a blessing than <laughs> praying in the front line right yeah But unfortunately that's what dogma do- i mean this is you know in one in one story this is a problem with dogma like it it elevates certain things over other things i mean to be honest you you know saving the girl could be a, you could look at it as a dogma too but 
that's that's more useful to human beings saving someone's uh, helping someone's daughter Ooh. rather especially after what you said about se- and by the way i was warned too by muslims when i was muslim mm-hmm. watch your kids sometimes if you're coming from canada mm-hmm. or like a rich, rich country you some of my kidnap your kids like i was told watch your kids carefully yeah. because um Mus- muslims told me other muslims have had the kids kidnapped um in makkah so i was also scared when i went there i was like watching my kids like oh you brought I your went. kids <laughs> yeah we went we all went the whole family went we um, all went together yeah 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 the, in my country is normally is the um, older people who would go you know kids only the rich people brought their kids i guess because you know our, <laughs> yeah. our currency is not that strong in the world so yeah <laughs> yeah no we, we needed the we, it was a family trip anyways and we were going to egypt so we stopped on the way oh. and uh, we made a this was a good op- opportunity for us to see and i wanted my kids to see you know see makkah medina and all of that yeah. stuff it's a, it's i don't think they really overall they were too they were too young i think to really understand what was oh, going yeah. on to them it was just yeah. like a trip they didn't really care yeah um but it, yeah it, the downsides for sure taking your kids to a place like that because obviously if you want to go and do a lot of worship you can't do that with kids around because your kids need to be taken care of right so yeah yeah, yeah and uh yeah, and then I want to tell you a story. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, it was in Mecca. You know, like um, I told you, it's like men there, they all like, like the shopkeepers. They're always trying to touch you, or you know, like if you go and I was like looking at shoes, right? And the guys like, okay, try this on, and then he would touch my leg, you know, like oh, you know, like all these bad. guys like, oh, I'm looking at jewelry rings, and I was like, okay, and then he would like caress my hand you know <laughs> things like wow. that wow um, that's creepy yeah yeah <laughs> do these people like you know what are these people like so sexually frustrated like that they can have up to four wives yet they're still acting like this yeah but then you you look at the place it's mecca everything is covered up you yeah. know there's no <laughs> billboards there's no tv channel showing you like mtv at that time mtv with like you know sexy people or whatever so they're sexually frustrated there's no books or porn or your your internet is blocked um <laughs> you know like the, I, I don't know about today but like you, you couldn't yeah you it's know? the same today it's yeah, the same right? because i i went like a couple of years ago and it was not a couple of years well like eight nine ten years ago and even then they had blocks on like saudi like islam qa which is a saudi salafi website was blocked and I, I was confused about that for a long time. Why would they block an Islamic website? But apparently, even for religious education, um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, only mm-hmm. from their websites. Yeah. Not allowed I was, to come. yeah. I was in Dubai and uh, I I had at the time I was reading this like website called Religious Tolerance or something like that. It's just like showcasing all the different religious in the, religions in the world. And no, it's blo- it was blocked. They don't want people to even learning about other religions or any i guess they use certain keywords you know yeah so so um so do you think in in do you think that actually societies like that which are ultra conservative actually end up creating more sexual problems by uh-huh. it's <laughs> a that's a word repression breeds obsession mm-hmm. so when you sexually re- repress um or when you repress ah. something that's very natural, it makes you like so obsessed about it, thinking about it every day. That's true and because if you if you, if it's just there, you're like okay, whatever. But if yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay. You can't have I mean, this. I have no problem with people. You know, like if I wear a short skirt, you look at my legs, and then you go home and you work yourself off. You know, like go ahead. You know, don't bother me. But you know, yeah. it's on this whatever. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so imagine this place in my car. You know, no, no posters, no billboards, no, no, uh, you know, the books with no women dating. on it, and no the women all wear, you know, yeah, the cob, yeah, and uh, and you could tell where people are from, uh, women especially, you know, where where they are from by the way they dress. Like we Asians, we wear, um, we don't cover our face normally. We just like just, so, you, you know, the, the, yeah. Uh, the Saudis they were black, uh, <laughs> you know. The uh, I don't know the you can tell the uh, Indians, Pakistani they were different things, you know. Like so, you can tell these things, right? So, um, I I think it's my theory that because we Asians we don't cover our faces, we get harassed a lot, and because maybe we're smaller in you know, and we're not as um, I I notice even the Saudi women they are very like 
express oh, it. Like yeah, they talk. Yeah. They talk to the shopkeepers, even though they they're wearing niqab, but the way they talk, like oh, oh, oh you know, like, <laughs> like, the yeah. were normally not like that, you know. Oh, okay. So we get. I think that that's one reason why we got harassed more, and uh, yeah. Anyway, mm, so yeah, that's unfortunate. I mean, I I've heard stories like this. I didn't realize the. I didn't realize it was that bad, but I do know that you know apostate prophet actually covered this as well with his interview with Nuria. she said the same thing and when i went there obviously i wasn't with any women it was just my mom actually my wife was there but she also put on the niqab just for mm -hmm. security yeah, but, yeah, extra, for the... extra privacy and security because she had also heard that you know white women as well are also sexually assaulted more mm -hmm. because they look different and they don't yeah. they, they stand out right so when we yeah. went to egypt as well she wore niqab as well but then obviously she took it off when we came back but mm -hmm yeah that's it's sad it's yeah. that bad i i didn't realize it was actually that awful and you know so how did this so this made you real, did this make you feel like muslims are fake muslims or that or how did you how did you interpret this it may be question like um um yeah it's like oh, so bullshit you know <laughs> yeah this is all bullshit you know like uh you, you you if you really believe in islam and like you know like this is the holy place at least you wanna you know, even though i wasn't believing in islam much anymore but i could i was still wanted to go and i still did all the rituals the back and forth the circling you know like okay just whatever just to feel what it you know like what it was like or whatever but, but at least you respect you know but anyway, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's all bullshit. <laughs> it's a the rituals is pagan in origin. We know that, you know the <laughs> the rituals existed way before Islam came. You know, like Muhammad yeah. came and took over and said, "Okay, we're gonna keep doing <laughs> it and call it Islam from now on." You know. And yeah, the, that's exactly what happened. Like the, yeah. the rituals, and you know, there's even examples of hadith where the companions were like. You want us to do this? This is like, like, are you, like this is pagan, right? They didn't, they didn't use those words, but they're like, you know, going between Safa and Marwa. Those are the two idols, right? The idols that were on the, the oh. hills. And he's like, no, no, no. This is a sign of Allah. Safa and Marwa, you can do it. <laughs> so it's now, <laughs> it's Islamicized, right? It's become mm. halal, right? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they were, they, yeah, I read that they were, what they brought all their idols and put it around Kaaba and, and the the hajj time it wasn't just a religious pilgrimage it was also the place was also an economic place right they came and traded whatever yeah. so so it, it wasn't just religion it was religion slash economy whatever yeah yeah the the the, <laughs> the pilgrimage was a big business business thing even back even then back big then. money maker yeah. right <laughs> yeah yeah so anyway one last thing before we leave the mecca topic yeah so i was i got to talking to our hotel attendant he was from in india i think and i had sex with him in the attic <laughs> um in mecca so to me at that time it, it was nothing to speak <laughs> of you know but i don't know I thought, like, haram. I extra haram. What happened, you know like this is the holy place you know surely god wouldn't let me yeah. wouldn't let it happen but i did it and nothing happened you know? yeah so, <laughs> like I was extra, extra blasphemous. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know. Wanted to see what happened, you know, and uh, all those things, you know, like oh, okay, that's it, you know. So I, I went to. So my mom wanted to bring me to Mecca to make me go back <laughs> to Islam. It had the opposite effect. I'm sorry, mom. Anyway, so I went back, and okay, that's it. That's it. Um, yeah, eight years now, sort of. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. so you went. You actually leaving Mecca. You became more confident in your positions that Islam was false. Yeah, because yeah. because yeah. like you said. So when when you saw the Kaaba, what did you think? Did you feel anything? The fear was still there. Yeah. And then they uh, the the tour guide would give us like a sh piece of paper. Yeah. With okay, she would say okay if you pray here. The points is multiplied by one hundred thousand. If you pray here, you know, yes. like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like all those things. You should try to do all these things while you're here. Um, 
the fear was there. But other than that, mm, the feeling of I'm the chosen one. No, no. You know, like some people oh, say, you know, like, um, oh, uh, it was so surprising. You see all these birds like pooping way over there. <laughs> and then I'm praying <laughs> over here and no bird poop on me. You know, like yeah. they feel like I'm the chosen one. I'm the, uh, yeah. no, I did not feel I was, that, that's a term uh, for it. Um, Haji Mabrur. Do you know the Mabrur? Haji Mabrur means accepted Hajj. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. We, so we have that term, you know, like sometimes you come back and you're sick, you you were sick while you're over there and you come back, so you oh. didn't really you say, Oh, that's not my bro, you know, like like yeah. <laughs> mm. But if you come back and you feel, oh, I'm so blessed, yeah, it's more my bro than not like me, definitely not my bro. Mm. <laughs> anyway. You know, you know it's interesting that it makes sense that you would expect that if this was truly from God. And there was truly some special blessed connection to the real creator in this place. You should have experienced that. You should yeah. have felt that. You should, because what we see now is that the Makkah and every other religious ceremony and ritual is it. It's nothing different. It's just human beings again playing make believe. Yeah. And so what we what we find is they're being just as bad over there as anyone else. And I think the people that live there are probably more jaded than anyone else. Yeah. Because to everybody else, they're like, oh my yeah, God. You just go, God. Yeah, you just come for two weeks and then you go back home, you know, like yeah. people over but there. The people that live there, they yeah. see the theft, the corruption, the murder, the all of that stuff, the, the, the sexual harassment. And of course, like you said, it's even worse over there because at least if you're in a real Disneyland, they would the police would come and yeah, investigate yeah, and take it yeah, yeah. and throw that man in jail or at least he'd be charged or whatever there'd be a case but over here it's just like well you're scared to even tell the police because the police first yeah. of all they probably don't care they'll probably ask you for a bribe and then mm -hmm. they might arrest you at the end of it and you're, you're a foreigner with no rights or whatever um so yeah it's it's actually worse than disneyland you know yeah. you, the non-muslim <laughs> disneyland would actually be better to take takes care the non-muslim countries take better care of the women than yeah. the real yeah. creator yeah. house mm -hmm. on earth right yeah. and you know i wonder i i i mean I, I know you wouldn't be able to answer this but i honestly wonder like even for like for example the sikhs in the sikh temple the holy the golden temple in india mm -hmm. do they have the same mm -hmm. sort of experiences where they go there and they feel jaded do people that go to the you know the catholic to meet the pope or whatever do they feel jaded like because some people do have the opposite they do have this religious awakening and they feel mm -hmm. inspired mm -hmm. and this yeah and, that. and but the funny thing is i guess because i talk to a lot of ex-muslims i know more examples of people like you yeah of I went to yeah. and they're like like okay this is what is this <laughs> I, th I expected something else but it even to me when i went i was like I saw the Kaaba and everyone told me when you see the Kaaba, you're going to uh -huh. cry. I saw um, the Kaaba. My first, uh -huh. my first thing was, it's kind of smaller than I thought. I thought it'd be bigger. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm not crying. And I was disappointed. Uh -huh. I'm like, bad, bad, bad. Bad. like I, I want to feel, I, feel, I was like pure Muslim. I wasn't doubting mm -hmm. nothing. I, I was pure Muslim at the time. And I think it just didn't have that effect on me. So I, well, I think you're, you're being honest with yourself. And these other people, yeah. if they feel something, I think that it comes from within. It's them, yeah. you know? Yeah, they make it. the feeling. <laughs> we want it so much that it happened, you know? Yeah. Or the or this uh this a term for it, I forget what. Uh, yeah. the you know, like you you know, like people say, oh, it's a coincidence, you know, like I was hoping and then it happened. It's because you were hoping you yeah. see it. Otherwise, you wouldn't see it because you weren't hoping, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. And shout out to uh, Fatally Honest. She's in the chat as well. She's another um, hey. Asian ex Muslim. <laughs> so, check out her channel if you get a chance. She's, she just makes good content. So, anyway. Um, yeah. So, I came back and I went, okay. Oh, sorry. One more thing. Mm. Be because I just thought of it. Someone mentioned Arab ego, um, and I, I don't, I think he's talking about something else, but it made me think about this. Did you feel racism at all over there? Um, classes, yeah. Re racism, maybe because we weren't really mixing with other people, so we stick to our people. So, mm, but classes, but went... yeah, the way, way we all like being segregated anyway, mm. you know, like they're trying mm. to, they're trying to make people like 
you know, go wherever they needed to go smoothly. So, um, when when I went, mm -hmm. especially as a brown person, you okay. feel that a lot. Like no, Pakistani, really. Pakistani, they they call you Pakistani if you're if you're black. They might even yeah. joke and call you Abid, Abd, like slave. Uh -huh, um, uh -huh, uh -huh. I felt, I, I mean, I I did notice that because coming from Canada, where you know people they don't really judge you like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe they do, but they don't say it to your face. But over there, they say it to your face, Pakistani. Like, they, I'm automatically Pakistani. Uh, I'm not even Pakistani. <laughs> I'm from Kenya. Yeah, yeah. I'm 0% yeah, yeah, yeah. Pakistani. But I'm immediately yeah. assumed to be Pakistani. And you can see the the way they talk to the... Yeah, you're like, some of it's classism, some of it's racism maybe, but you don't feel like these are, like, holy people at all. Oh, no. They're no, worse no. than non-Muslims. Yeah. So, like, yeah. the, the character is... And then they don't line up. They, they don't know how to line oh, no, up. no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, remember that when the one time the there was a picture, you know, when Japan was hit by a tsunami or something, and then the next day, like, pe un, you know, with all the rubble and people were lining up to get water, you know, like these people, ev even after such a tragedy, they still had manners, you know, but yeah, this place is the opposite, you know, I, I don't want to say all of them are like that you know I've, i work in international companies and i work with uh i don't i don't remember errors but egyptian you know then you know just oh, some are okay for sure but the place that i were maybe the less educated ones i don't know i i don't want to yeah yeah I don't not to generalize, but, <laughs> yeah 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 that's true not to overgeneralize what i meant was in that but, society yeah. it's okay to tr behave that way not not the yeah yeah they're person. more they're more normalized than other it's places. it's yeah. it's considered okay like you know how in america now you have this thing with wokeism and everybody is basically so concerned about pronouns and you know mm -hmm. racism mm -hmm. of course is the cons the the care about racism is very very high over there no mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. even existent no, it's no. like good luck like you know someone's yeah, yeah. like nobody cares if someone's racist so the society here is you know i i don't know muslims maybe they'll disagree but it's far more civilized i'm sorry to say if i sound yeah. like a colonialist or something <laughs> i'm just saying my reflections being there yeah, being here, yeah. people here are far more civilized yeah they treat you with <laughs> dignity and respect and kindness like as a muslim as a freaking muslim oh, yeah. with a big beard Oh, I, I was respected as a human being. I nobody. I mean, maybe some people treated me badly, but for the most part, everybody treated me decently. Like yeah. you know, yeah. In general, I love the Muslims in the West. They're nice. Mm -hmm. They even went to the pride parade, you know, to show support for LGBT. <laughs> so bit, I uh... have no problem with the the Mia, No problem, you know. <laughs> yeah, but in Muslim majority country, that's uh, yeah, different thing. <laughs> yeah, no, I meant I meant the non-Muslims treated treat Muslims here yeah. better than Muslims treat non-Muslims over there. Oh yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Um, so before we continue, because uh, there were two super chats, we we'll just quickly address them. Uh, mm -hmm. One of them was from Stop Scamming Man. Thank you again for the donation. He said, "Hi, this is again totally." off topic but okay. uh, recently Malaysia's ex-prime minister said it wouldn't be justified to murder millions of French in reprisal for colonialism I didn't see much backlash yeah. from Malaysians <laughs> over this. Do you know about this what he's talking about no no I haven't okay so that's fine I, I know what he's talking about there was you know the Malaysian prime minister made some really really dumb comment Ew. about about like <laughs> tit for tat sort of thing if you don't know anything about it, that's fine but thank yeah. you for the super chat stop scamming man and last question is from Azri He's saying a bit of topic, but Julie, do you agree that Malay special rights is like an apartheid system? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but I, I I understand why it had to, you know, they had to do it in the first place. Um, in, the, you know, back then, um, you know, when the British came to, you know, colonize Malaysia, or at that time, uh, Tanah Melayu, um, you know, they, uh, for, I, I don't know exactly why, you know, but they they, made, uh, they brought the Chinese to work in the tin mines and the Indians to, you know, from, from India and from China to work in the, the Indians work in the plantation. 
So over time, those opportunities have rewarded the Chinese, especially, you know, like, so the, today if you go to Malaysia, the Chinese are more concentrated in the big cities because those big cities were tin mines before, you know, the, the city just formed around the mines. So the, Chin, the Chinese control the businesses in Malaysia. And uh, so the Malays were kind of like, oh, okay, how come we were not given the opportunity? Some people say, oh, because you didn't want to work in the first place. I don't know. I don't know why the reason, but that's what happened. Yeah. So there was a clash and there were, you know, racial fighting and people died. Um, you know, the, the uh, Chinese, uh, Malay attacking Chinese, killing one another. Mm -hmm. So because of that, um, you know, the government came up with a program to give some rights to the Malay people, which, you know, like programs like giving, uh, discounts to buy to for loans to buy houses for example or like me i got a scholarship to go study overseas you know those it's not cheap yeah <laughs> so you know so so they, they were hoping eventually it will you know like uh, like lessen the difference mm, more i see you know? so, so okay. but yeah but it is kind of it is a petite system and i think Today, we don't need it anymore, you know. Uh, I don't know. I'm not an economist, you know, like you <laughs> study these things before you take it. You know, but yes, it is uh, unfair. Right. So um, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, next question is about uh, S. Murphy. Malcolm X said different. So Malcolm X said different. What he's trying to say is that Malcolm X, when he went to Mecca and he oh. was amazed at the Hajj. So I'm just going to make it, I've read Malcolm X's autobiography. I do love the guy and I love his book and I recommend people read it. I think he's a genuinely good, great individual who really truly was trying to find the truth and did whatever he could. But the problem with what Malcolm X said is he got celebrity treatment uh, at the Hajj. Yeah. The the prince or whoever it was at the time gave him a special access. He was kept in five-star hotels. He was kept away from the halls. You know, I, I've heard from people from, I'm from Africa, and I've talked to my uncle. My uncle said when they went for Hajj, like all the Africans would sleep in one giant like room, right? Like it's not, like when you say everybody's equal at the Hajj, it's not true. Mm -hmm. You have people yeah. sleeping in air-conditioned yeah. tents, getting like, you know, buffet meals. Like as if they're on like, again, Disneyland sort of experience. And then you got people that, you know, mm -hmm. the, there's a, like 30 of them sleeping on the floor in a room together, all coughing and making each other sick and stuff like that, right? So you can't really, you know, Malcolm X was genuinely a good person, but his experience was was very one-sided. He had, yeah. he yeah. had the, the freaking prince of the kingdom yeah. showing him around, giving him, you know, like he's going to only see what they want him to see. He didn't see the racism. He didn't see, he was a special guest of the, right. you know, and of the people, government. People can have different experience. You yeah. can go there, stay in the worst kind of place and still uh, feel good about it. You know, like the, just because their experience is true doesn't make my experience less right. You know, like you can have yeah, different experiences that's true. though. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm just saying that. Yeah. It, yeah. That's a perfect point. Okay. <laughs> so go ahead. Yeah. That, done with yeah. Maka now. <laughs> and I'm, I'm not saying you should go to Maka. Go if you want to go. But it, that's my opinion about it is, uh, you know, like I'm not against people having religion. Believe in whatever bullshit that you want. You know, the, my problem with religion in general is just when you started discriminating people and call and call it religion and say, oh, God wants it that way, you know, like, yeah. like the Westboro Baptist Church, you know, like, you know, you talk to them as a person, they're nice, but they said, oh, <laughs> God said you have to hate facts, you know, like, yeah, I mean, I'm using their word, okay? Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we so, definitely don't, yeah, yeah, So exactly. it, it make you know, th those are the things that I have a problem with. Uh, the other stuff, you know, you want to pray five, ten times a day, as long as you don't bother other people, you don't enforce hijab on women, you don't politicize religion, you know, that that's all, <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Uh, someone's asking, can non-Muslims go there? No, non-Muslims cannot go there. No. Uh, yeah, and no. in terms of, um, in terms of racism, you know, I, you know, some people in the chat are saying that Muhammad taught racism. I personally disagree with that. 
I know there are racist mm. hadith out there, but I was actually taught the opposite that that you mm. don't treat people based differently based on race in Islam. And you go to any mosque, whether there's a black imam or white imam or Bosnian mm. or Turkish or Arab, in at least in Canada, there's no difference. You can go to any mosque and you'll be treated the same no matter what your color of your skin is. I never felt any racism in Canada from Muslims. This only yeah. happened when I went to, like you said, a classist society where the, they're very heavily classist. To the point that when you go to, in Egypt, I found this funny. On mm -hmm. the doors, they, okay, they have names on, names on the doors of in the apartment building. They have people's names on them. And they would have like Mohandas, meaning engineer, and then the name. Oh. Or like doctor. <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. of them would put doctor. Like, it's like, okay, does everyone need to know you're a doctor? Apparently, everybody needs to know you're a doctor. So you put it on the name of your door. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, mm -hmm. it's important over there. What your, what your profession is apparently makes a big difference in how you're treated, right? So, yeah, anyways, we we talked enough about my guy. Yeah, no, I think we're kind of stuck on that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so okay, so what happened after that? Uh, yeah, so there was a, if, if there's any turning point, that was it for me. And then, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that was 2005. But I was still like closeted, murtad, you know, like you didn't tell anybody, not even, uh, no, maybe my, my boyfriend at the time. But, not even my friends knew about it, even though, you know, like I had friends to go drinking with, you know, like, okay, no problem with that, but they're still Muslim, you know, everybody's still Muslim and I didn't tell anybody. And um, yeah, and then in 2010, 2011, um, I, I had, I've had Facebook since 2007, but I was not really active and I was using my real name, you know, like, um, you know, I, I had friends and family like work friends and um uh, and family uh, on you know like uh, connected to me on facebook and then uh, one day i just i saw like my friend join a group called murtad in malaysia in singapore um so and then i asked to join you know it's a private group so it's not public to to anybody um so i joined and then with this account, you know, like uh, Julie Jalaluddin and, uh, and then I started, you know, posting things and, you know, it's mostly just reflections and what I saw. And uh, I, what did I post one time? You know, something like um, about uh, God and women or something like that, you know, mm. um, like why, why God is so controlling of women. Um, uh, and my, my conclusion is that uh, God sounds like a middle age, uh, <laughs> middle uh, middle Eastern men. You know, like the way you know they want to control women. You know, <laughs> uh, and then somebody screenshot, and then it became oh. viral. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and in Malaysia, in Malaysia at that time, there was a few cases before me. You know, like um, you know, like people who who got viral because of something they said on, on the internet, you know, like, and then they got dogs and then um, some of them, they just like go quiet, you know, like lay low for a while, stay quiet for a while and then come back. Or some of them, like, especially the, like, if you're like a more public or come from a prominent family, they would make a public statement saying that, um, Oh, you know, like, oh, I take back what I say, you know, I'm still Muslim, just for the record, blah, 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 you know, like, but we know, you know, like, we when we talk to them, we know, they just have to put up, you know, an appearance. Um, so anyway, and then it happened to me, you know, and then, uh, yeah, I got dogs, they put all my family's names and, um, you know, my, they know my, they don't, they didn't know where I, I was, I didn't tell, I, I didn't put my address anywhere online, so they didn't know where I was living, but they know where my, my mom was living. Yeah, my dad was quite, uh, you know, when he was alive, he was quite popular person in our village, you know, he's like, quite influential. So people know, and then uh, uh, I, I don't know how much they were harassed, you know, but um, my sister said some reporters went and to my mom's place and wanted to in you know, talk to her and wow. uh, until, in yeah, <laughs> yeah, and they of course they blame me for it, you know, like oh. because of you stop saying all these things, you know, like why, why are you saying all these things? And I had an argument, um, um, you know, in 
message with my brother for hours. I remember that night. <laughs> you know, I I didn't say out loud, yes, I'm Murtad, but I said, nope, I don't agree. I don't agree with the way Islam is. You know, he was trying yeah. to save me, you know, like put me back or whatever. So can I ask you something? So this yeah, was in Malaysia. Right. This I was in Malaysia. And yeah. is this against the law in Malaysia to post what you posted? Uh, not that I don't know. <laughs> not no, it's not illegal. No. Okay, but but they, if they but some people have been uh, I I don't want to say arrested, but taken. You know, okay, like interrogated. The, yeah, they've been interrogated. And they have, they would have, so they make your life kind of difficult. They would take your phones away, your computer away during the oh. investigation, and then they might, you might not get it back. Oh. So, okay. and like, uh, there was, there was this kid, uh, I remember, she, he liked the uh, I Love Israel Facebook group one time, and he was <laughs> taken, you know, like, because of that. Well, Maybe it was a mistake, you click by mistake or whatever. <laughs> you know, he's a kid, you know. Um, oh but God. I was, I was, I was technically a Muslim, right? Yeah. So, but if let's say if you're non-Muslim, if you're Chinese or Indian, and you say things like that, questioning, they might take you in and say, "Oh, you're trying to mess around with Islam, and Islam has a special right in Malaysia." You know, so uh, I, it's not really illegal, but you know they use whatever law they have, like yeah. disrupting racial racial harmony, oh, for example. You know. Harmony. Yeah, so they're yeah, disrupting peace. <laughs> Some, yeah, that that you know, people have so, been taken. It sounds, it sounds a little bit better than um, Pakistan, a lot better actually. Oh yeah, yeah, Pakistan, yeah, like a lot, a lot better. Or like even the Middle East, like many Muslim countries. You yeah, know, I remember right? in Bangla Bangladesh, like some. Some journalists got killed right away, you know? <laughs> yeah, Bangladesh, I, I think the problem with Bangladesh is, I mean, I'm no expert, but I think it's more the mobs than the government. The, oh, I, the okay. government is trying to, yeah, yeah, yeah. to deal with it. Uh -huh. But in Pakistan, the, the government is actually, um, I'll just mute you for one second. In Pakistan, the government is actually the one that's enabling the this um, abuse, right? So it's, it's actually perpetrated by the government which is unfortunate okay one second one second yeah yeah no worries no worries so while we're waiting for julie to deal with uh, maxi uh um yeah so <laughs> this is why dogs are haram in islam <laughs> they ruin your live stream no, just they kidding. ruin no. your podcast <laughs> <laughs> no 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 it's all good uh, we have a dog too right now, so puppy. So yeah. that's uh, it's it's nice. It's nice having a dog. Uh, um, yeah. they, it's it's more more work than having a cat for sure. But uh, yeah. they're, they're really <laughs> loving, like way more loving than cats <laughs> in general. I love both anyway. Yeah. yeah. So what what we um where were we what were we saying? Yeah, yeah, we're just talking about Malaysia and how you got doxxed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Your yeah. family got doxxed. Your parents you were harassed. The reporters came to your house um yeah else? so so anyway my uh yeah my family blame me basically you know like it's because of you you were doing all these things you know saying all these things on the internet and then i, I was like you know i was arguing with my brother for hours you know and uh, my brother-in-law you know messaging me saying that you should make a public statement retracting what you said you know like Oh, uh, well, you know, I, I try to be nice about it, but I won't go that far, you know, like I refuse to do that. And my brother said, I'm going to come talk to your boss, you know, drag your ass back home, something like that. And I was like, come on, I'm, I was at the time, I was like 38 years old. I've been working since I was 25, financially independent. I never asked for money. I live away from you. I'm not dependent on you. And you want to do what again? You know, like, um, <laughs> you know, like, come on, <laughs> you know, and then like, uh, and then, uh, so I basically just like uh, stood my ground, you know? Yeah. But I felt, I felt sorry for them, you know, like, uh, I was like, you know, come at me. I'm the one who said these things, not them. You know, don't harass them. And up to the point that they were embarrassed to go to work, embarrassed the kids, embarrassed to go to school. You know, like I'm sorry. You know. Um, yeah, yeah, that's and, good. And, that's and, a good point uh, that you were financially independent. And I always tell people that ask me this question, 
like how can I should I talk about Islam because a lot of people want to talk about it because they feel like it's part of the therapy for them to, to sort of you know let out their feelings yeah. and say this is what yeah. I was lied to I feel cheated you know this was what I believe to be true was not true and they want to say it I always yeah. tell people wait until you're financially yeah. independent wait and, yeah. because you don't you don't want to be kicked out of your house for this. exactly that will just make your life a mess you don't want to mess it, up your life yeah and if you're young way. yeah yeah if you're young you're a teenager you're dependent on your parents to pay for your bills and your 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 studies or whatever don't you know like uh, you know <laughs> don't do it yet you know <laughs> like you think about that you know you don't want to be homeless you know yeah and and by the way i have to say your personality is just like mine Oh. I don't care what anyone thinks. I just can't help myself. I feel like even if my parents would have been devastated, I, they're very liberal. They don't care. Yeah. But I couldn't help myself. I'm just, that's just my personality. And I think people like that, we want to share to people and we don't care what the consequences is. We just, we just do it. Right. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not young anymore. Even yeah. that, when that happened, I was already 38, you know, I'm yeah. not like 20. <laughs> if I was 20, maybe it would be different. You yeah. know, maybe I would listen to them, but yeah. I was already 38. You know, oh. like, come on, <laughs> you know? So, and, that's true. Uh, You're an adult. Like, you have every right to say whatever you want to say. Yeah. Right? It's like, you know, if I don't do it now, when am I going to do it? When I'm 60 on my deathbed, you know? Like, yeah. true. So, it's like, you know, like, I don't want to keep on being closeted more and more i want to be more open over time till the day i die instead of the other way around and uh, i've like all my life i felt that i've all uh like i've always been closeted for one reason or another you know like hiding who you really are and that can take a toll on somebody you know like you today you know like my personality is um it's because of what you went through and that's that's not a good thing like uh you know if i had kids i don't but kids should be encouraged to speak what you know you can tell them oh yeah that's wrong or that's right but they should be encouraged to speak instead of hushing them like oh shouldn't say that shouldn't say this so anyway yeah and um yeah so and um so my uh so i just sort of like stopped talking to my family at that time and then one day uh my family just came to my house unannounced so <laughs> my my mom my sister and a couple other people they came and what they wanted to do is like make me like quit my job and follow them home and my mom told me okay i'll 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 go to quranic quran classes with you we'll read the quran together so i was you know like i felt like i was meant to be this um broken bird to be safe and reform you know like okay the you know like I mean, that's the way they thought of me. You know, I didn't feel that. I felt liberated, if anything. Well, I was depressed at the time, but in terms of you know speaking out my mind, I felt liberated. The opposite. So I, there's no way I could do that. I think if I went back home with them at that time, I could end up killing myself. You know, like you you didn't want to do that. <laughs> so, so anyway, well, they they weren't aware of that. You know, like they weren't aware of. I, I I think like at that time I was like I was also like leaving um my ex-boyfriend and he was kinda abusive and it took me like a couple of years to leave him. So that and also coming to terms with what you know, like uh, like uh, I told you I was sexually abused as a child, you know, too young and I blame myself for it. So those experiences, you know, like, I kinda like repress it press you know don't don't think about it it will it will be okay and then uh, one day i just like saw myself um stuck in a cycle i was like being with abusive men one after another and it was like so i was you know like suddenly you're just like oh that's it you know like you want to get out of it and the realize the, uh, the realization make you feel so depressed and like but you want to struggle to get out um so and then coupled with this you know like so it's like I had to fight, fight with it, you know, fight to overcome it. So I said, that's it, you know, like, it's as if like, okay, I want to start a new, that's it, leave everything. So I told my mom, go back home. <laughs> that's it. I didn't try to explain anything. I wanted to, but I, I couldn't. And then it's, it's not their fault, it's my fault, because we, we were never really, 
well at least me anyway maybe they they're not like like that but i never really spoke my mind even as a child kind of like hiding close at that even though they know how rebellious i was um so i couldn't explain it i could write it in a blog i could talk to you about it but i could i could not tell my mom you know yeah so i couldn't explain it i just told her go home mom <laughs> just go home and um yeah and then yeah so and uh, after that i they tried to call me they they never really left me i was the one who cut them off mm -hmm. for a while and um they texted me they tried to call me i just ignored messages uh but at that time it was still like they they were still trying to guilt trip you i mean that's what islam does you know they they try to oh you know like it's because of you mom is sick it's because of you and this you know like for months it's the same kind of messages you know i just ignore everything and then one day the messages started changing tone it's more like how are you you know oh, like wow. yeah so yeah. i guess like maybe maybe like okay like uh, if you're if you're gonna keep on blaming me then maybe i shouldn't be in your life um but um and then when it is this okay we maybe we should accept you just the way you are and maybe that's the, that's why the change in tone so and that was like eight years later i mean you know like there were messages here and there calls here and there but like eight years later i'm already here and then they reach out to my husband right now and then my husband my husband was like it's time for you to talk to them <laughs> so one day, I, you know, so yeah, since last year or two years ago, we started oh, talking. Oh wow, about very recently. Yeah, very recent. So I think like seven, eight years, I didn't talk to my family. Wow. So how was that talking to them? Well, my 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 husband told my sister, maybe just don't talk about religion stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't. We just sort of like avoid that, you know. Mm. <laughs> They're still Muslim. I'm still eight yeah. years. You know? <laughs> but we can be family so yeah. yeah so we just don't talk about those things i mean but you know how moms are you know like you know they they would say assalamu alaikum you know like um you know even in text you know we young people we don't do that but older people they say those things i just yeah. say oh alaikum salam no problem you know like okay just go along with it you know anyway so yeah i would say um I, I i totally understand that i have the same relationship with my brother um we just don't talk about religion <laughs> yeah yeah because we don't need yeah, to we, know, we already know we already yeah. know we don't agree so yeah, yeah. exactly yeah exactly so um yeah so that that's quite a beautiful journey um you know it seems like you went through a lot of hardship and a lot of difficulties uh, what you said about the patterns of relationships is very true as well. A lot of times we subconsciously end up going from relationship to relationship without realizing that the certain, yeah. you know, we've, 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 um, we've got unhealthy patterns in our lives that have started from childhood and we don't necessarily recognize that. So we keep repeating mm -hmm. the same mistakes. Mm -hmm. It's all too human thing to do. You know, both guys and girls do this. They both end up picking sometimes people that they feel more comfortable for comfortable or they or maybe even more exciting but in many cases it ends up being a bad match it's just that as a child you never you know you never got the proper model or something like that mm -hmm. right yeah um and and now you're happily married right which is which is great yeah. yep yep and my husband is uh he was born catholic but now he's eight years so <laughs> <laughs> yep yep we, and uh yeah that's another thing you're not allowed to be married to a non-muslim man right yeah so yeah but we got married uh we don't have we didn't have a church wedding or anything like it's just like a, a lawyer yeah. we just that's said you know like okay <laughs> and <laughs> so did, yeah did we talk about how you left malaysia someone's asking did you leave oh malaysia? yeah um yeah so when i was uh i uh when my i think when my mom when when uh, when my family came to visit me to bring me home whatever but at that time i already quit my job it was in 2012 or 2011 i forgot but i already quit my job so i i had an apartment at that time that i sold so i was waiting for the money and i i just wanted to take like a year off you know like just travel a little bit you know and um uh, yeah just i don't know kind of like a spiritual pilgrimage on my own or something i don't know um 
but the the sale of my apartment took a while to to, to come through so i didn't have, i was like oh i had no money i had to start looking for a job again so and then i got a job offer in norway oh okay so yeah so nice. yeah and um but at that time because i, I was I, I talked about my depression right so uh, i went until one point that i couldn't really focus at work so i think my job was kind of slipping so that's also another reason i wanted to take some a year off so i went to norway i got a job there and so i worked there for a couple of years and then i quit again and something i got i got uh, exposed again in norway if oh like, again yeah <laughs> kind of stupid i mean how can you get exposed so many times right <laughs> yeah but anyway oh yeah back to malaysia so i was exposed um like dogs on the internet um like they took a picture of me and they have this group it's called uh pendedahan uh murtad or something like that it's like murtad exposure so they would like every week or so they would uh, they would do an expose expose of another murtad, and these are the particulars. Go harass them, what? Muslim warriors. Yes, yeah. Wow! <laughs> they took a picture of you from in real life, or you mean online? Picture that I post on the internet. You know, oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay. The thing, and you know, the, the, oh, why did they take an ugly picture? Take a nicer one, please. You know, <laughs> I want to look good in the expose. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah, so I was dogs back in Malaysia, and at that time, um, well, me and my ex at that time we were living in the same house, even though we were not talking. I was in the process of living for good, um, but um, he was talking to another friend who told me, you know, like, oh, you gotta be careful. Your name came up in Putrajaya. Putrajaya is like Washington D.C. You know, like, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh wow! So yeah, it's like your name came up in Putrajaya. I'm like, okay, but at that time I was like making my plans to leave, and then you know, so and eventually I left. So fine. So that was the first expose, <laughs> and then I went to Norway, and then uh, one day this reporter approached me, and then said, "Oh, I wanna like talk to you and stuff." So we had a nice chat. You know, I explained my position. You know, like oh this is what i think what i like what i don't like blah 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 you know and uh turns out it was a tabloid <laughs> paper. yeah and uh and then like uh the few days after that i i even gave him a picture i'm like okay you give me a picture you know like okay i gave him a picture you know and then i was in the front page of this tabloid newspaper oh, wow. with my with my face blurred you know, okay. like a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like okay, just because uh, I don't believe in Islam and having a different opinion, you know, and uh, and that was that was the bigger ex ex, you know, like bigger uh, docs or whatever. But I'm like okay. By this time, I was like whatever, you know, like I wasn't. Uh, and, oh, and. What happened at that time that made him wanted to talk to me was I created some Facebook page. Um, uh, Murtad in Pantai Timur. Pantai Timur is the state I'm from. It's actually consisted of two states, Kelantan and Terengganu, which is, uh, like I explained before, supposed to be uh, more religious than the rest of the country. And it even has a nickname, Serambi Mecca. Serambi means porch. So Mecca's porch, meaning that, you know, like, oh, we are more religious than you, you know, like the women there uh, wear hijab. And then, you know, we segregate men and women, you know. And if you have like a movie poster in my home state with a, a, a face of a woman, they would uh, like sharpie your hair. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So anyway. So, so they were enraged on my Facebook page because, you know, this is Mecca's porch. How could anybody from this day become more tired? You know, I was like, of course you can. Here I am, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's like, it's like the biggest slap or something. Um, and uh, I, you know, that, so uh, on that page, I recruited a few of my friends to become admin and uh, we we just were having fun, like posting like stupid stuff, like you know, like uh, I I post. I think I posted something uh, like 
Allah and Muhammad are gay lovers, something like that. Because we have a word uh, that they teach us. You know, I remember growing up, they say Muhammad um, is kekasih Allah. Kekasih is either boyfriend or girlfriend or lover. So, like, technically, I'm not wrong. <laughs> we have lovers. Yeah. And, yeah. and I assume God is male because he's definitely not female. So, they're gay yeah. lovers. Yeah. You know, like, and then people would uh, post you know, like kind of like a bit offensive things like Charlie Hebdo cartoons or things like okay. that of that nature. So it can get a little, you know. Yeah, but to me, it's like whether I agree or not, the way they approach people, that's none of my problem. It's just a cartoon. It's just something they write on the internet. It's not like yeah. they go and slap people. That's different. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so <sighs> sorry. <laughs> Hey, Maxi. <laughs> He's back. Okay. So anyway, so the page was only up for like one week. That was all. But it got like we got uh, likes. I don't know. Maybe it reached about 2,000 likes in, oh, wow. two, in two, three days. Um, but after one week, it got mass reported. And then it got taken down. But uh, and then at that time, I, you know, like I told um, I told the other people, admins you know like oh, people like oh okay they have to quit the admins they didn't want to be you know like because they're still in malaysia so i say oh okay you know like i'll, I'll admit i'm the sole admin you know like no problem so yeah that's what i said you know like oh i'm the admin no problem you know <laughs> and um so this reporter approached me and then we you know like we had a chat you know like normal people you know like what we're we doing right now just talking about things like this and then he put me in the front page like saying that oh she's because uh, i admitted to being depressed and things like that so oh she's lunatic so you know that's why she left this the gaslighting yeah it's um it's unfortunate that you know so so whenever someone leaves the religion it's not like they stop being human if they had any issues they would st issues would still continue those challenges and sometimes leaving the religion even though it is uh, the leaf and it is um you know it it unburdens you from a lot of things mm -hmm. still the 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 actual process of leaving can be a challenge because of the family pressure yeah the, you yeah. know the cultural pressures or losing a yeah. friend and i call it so, emotional blackmail <laughs> yeah yeah emotional blackmail and uh so it's you know self-doubt self-questioning and, and in your case you were very public about it very active so you get a lot more you got a lot more pressure as well from the public and you had this family issue so it's it's understandable that people that leave Islam have to go through all this, but you know, at the end of the tunnel, there's always a bright light, you know, there's always, a, there's always a chance to, to, um, to, to be free. Once, once you're free of the burden, then, you know, things do get better eventually. Right. Yeah. So, um, so I, uh, so after the article came out, I reached out to him and, you know, I'm like, why did you say all these things? I mean, you know, like when we were talking, you were not saying it like that and um, can you come get him yeah. <laughs> thank you honey um are you open the door oh my god it. sorry <laughs> <laughs> it's okay it's okay i have kids so i know the same same issue with kids except uh <laughs> so i'm i want to share your link i just muted you for a second i'm going to share your link to your blog and i want to let people know that um you can check out uh julie's blog her twitter as well i've linked as well in the description so check out her twitter check out her blog um is there any other places people can find you your facebook as well what would yeah. you prefer yeah i'm not i'm not active on my blog twitter or facebook <laughs> 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 but once in a while you know the, the reason was uh, like facebook uh, in one year you know like sometimes i got reported so much that i got oh. banned for like half a year so i'm like okay and then i would go to twitter you know twitter they are less <laughs> you know yeah. Strict about that, so, so I'm like uh, back and forth. But lately, you know, I've been busy and I'm kind of like cool yeah. down a little bit. But yeah, I mean, I'm around. I'm around. I'm not going anywhere. So, let me uh, let me go to a couple of questions. Um, then we will end off because it's been a great conversation and you've covered your story in great detail. Uh, we covered the one about the apartheid system and the prime minister. The next one is, um, yeah, we already answered that one about how to find you. Uh, what? can't fight this feeling is asking what percent of muslims do you think are closet ex-muslims in malaysia i don't know but i um 
yeah, I can't really say. But the, the, many people, many Muslims in Malaysia, they are ma many of them are liberal anyway. Yeah. They just they just don't don't bother to question. But if you talk to them, oh yes, I'm a Muslim. But then they go out drinking with you, you know, like <laughs> you see them having sex, like you know, like a yeah like i had i had friend i had one this one friend she was you know she was my drinking buddy and i know she had boyfriends and you know one guy after another and then one day she found out that i was you know i was famous on the internet and she tried to like advise me you know i was like come on i know you're drinking more than i do and then you know you have boyfriend that you're not married to and you want to tell me to be Muslim <laughs> come on uh, you know and then after it was like one time it was Ramadan or something and then we ate together you know, like, <laughs> yeah. so it's I mean she, she considered herself Muslim but at least she wasn't being hypocritical after that with me you know <laughs> okay no problem you know yeah. so I think like many Muslims in Malaysia they're already liberal they yeah. just don't bother to question you know like like most people they just don't don't question they just like it's just a name you know like when i went to norway you know like people there you know like oh what religion are you oh i'm kind of muslim but atheist and they're like oh yeah i'm i'm christian in name but yeah. i only go to church for funeral and wedding you know like yeah i think most people in malaysia is already like that oh uh, yeah but the ones who are more vocal you know that it's it's not a lot and i mean i see on facebook or Twitter but I will say this one thing when I started talking back in 2011 or 2012 I think people were more timid about it and at that time like more like I, I would consider my generation you know like but these days you see young people 18 years old 19 years old already being smart at, at maybe it's the internet you know like you can get information anywhere that you want you know easily and uh on Twitter, people are more, so what? I'm more that deal with it, you know, instead of trying to be more like apologist about it. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, I um, think that's the future as well. It's yeah. Be it's a lot it's of... still minor, I think, you know, but it's getting more and more. And um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I've, uh, since I've, I mean, I don't consider myself an activist or anything. I just talk stuff on the internet that's all um but i've had people come up to me and say oh yeah you know like years ago i was in school and uh, i i saw, i heard my friends talking bad about you you know like you're the infamous you know, <laughs> you know? Yeah. whatever but look i am today i'm friends with you i'm atheist <laughs> and, and uh there were a few people come up to me and say like oh yeah i will I'm, i want to say sorry because I used to argue with you defending Islam, but now I'm atheist <laughs> oh, <laughs> or agnostic wow. or whatever. Yeah, a few of them. Um, and one time, this was when I was back in Malaysia, or whatever, after I was first docs. So my face was uh, on the internet. And then I went to Apple store and this, I wanted to fix my MacBook. And this, this girl behind the desk was like, you know, you can see like, why well, she's smiling <laughs> like that. And yeah. he said, are you Julie Jalaluddin? Yeah. Oh, I follow you on Facebook. <laughs> like, keep doing what you do. Okay. <laughs> oh, well, somebody fangirling me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so I think it's, you know, back then it was more, you know, closeted, but these days, uh, but like, you know, like many, I know many people on Facebook, my friends, we have some Facebook groups or whatever. They have to be closeted because they're married, they have kids, you know, and they live in that community, they, you know, for work, you know, so they don't have the luxury to be fully open about it. So, but, you know, whether you want to be open or not open about it, you know, like whatever makes you, if you can live with it, that's fine. You know? mm. Yeah, not not yeah. not everybody has to speak their mind all the time, you know. As yeah. long as depends it, whether you can live with it or not. So, yeah, there definitely is a, a cost to doing this stuff. Um, yeah. Next question, and then we'll we'll try to end off on that. Uh, Nages sent a super chat. Thank you, Nages, and said, "Can you vision yourself setting up an international advocacy group for ex-Muslims in Malaysia?" 
Oh my god, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I could, I guess. <laughs> like I said, you know, I I don't consider myself an activist. I just talk shit on the internet. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> you know, like yeah, I guess I should be. I mean, I'm, I'm I mean, I do think that I'm in a position because I'm overseas, you know. Yeah. So I I I'm in the position. I I have the luxury to not be afraid and be more open about it. So I guess yeah, I feel like this. I do feel though because I get asked questions like this a lot too. Not exactly like that, but being involved in that sort of advocacy work or that sort of on the ground, you know, political action and religious stuff is very different from speaking about like like what I do. I do a lot of talking on the internet. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily know how to do those things. So when people ask me, you know, I, I I prefer to leave that for people that are good at that. And what I'd rather do is use my platform to help people to raise funds for them, or to bring awareness mm -hmm. to that. Like ex Muslims yeah. in North America does this type of work, and they're doing a great job. So I support them rather yeah. than me trying to do everything, and I'm not going to do a good job. Yeah. Right. So focusing yeah. on you know. And, yeah, and to me, spe speaking just speaking up in itself is um is a good thing because and then like you know like I re because. I remember back then, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, I was like, you know, like I wish somebody would speak up for me and I, me knowing about it, but I didn't know where to reach, who to reach, you know, but these days, you know, like you hear somebody talk about it, say, oh, that's what I think, you know, like, oh, it's okay to have those thoughts, you know, I don't have to feel so guilty anymore for having those thoughts, you know, like, so even speaking up itself, so that's why I said, like, you know, like I can talk, I can write things and people yes. can read and then you know <laughs> yeah that in itself is a big thing and more and people more and more it's like being being lgbt or whatever you know people say oh you know like you know like where do they come from back in my day mm -hmm. you know they're not so open about it you know yes but they do they did exist back then you just didn't know about it because they were more good at being closeted back then they exist throughout history you know until today so it, we, we're not we're not going away we're still here it's just whether you recognize our presence or not you know so. exactly and if this is this is like an honorable thing to fight for i mean uh people sometimes wonder why why do you talk about these things because this is basically giving people their lives back i mean i i think it's obvious this obvious there's other things that matter in life you know you there's animal rights issues there's environmental issues yeah. there's political issues there's lgbt lgbt is kind of also covered by some of the stuff that we do but because a lot of it is because of religious dogma. yeah yeah but this yeah. is basically giving people their lives back giving people a chance to yeah. not you know because when like you said when you leave islam you get gaslit you get a lot of you know bullying you get people emotionally blackmailing you so having people that are saying that you're not dumb you're you're not there's nothing wrong with you this is okay to think like this and this is your life you want to be with a non-muslim man go ahead of course, Muslim men can be with non-Muslim women. So what's that about? Like, so yeah. you should have the right to do what you want to do, to live your life the way you want to be. Some, sometimes people say like, you are now a slave to your desires. I'd rather be a slave to my desires than to Muhammad's desires, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't consider myself a slave <laughs> to my desires. I consider myself as someone that, you know, is doing what is best for his, his own life. I, I prioritize myself, obviously, and my family and everybody does that, you know, to some extent. Yeah, yeah, they, yeah. Even if yeah, they being, say that, you know. Being a little selfish is a uh, human nature. So you can be a little selfish provided that, you know, you, you want to be selfish for humanity, for example, or you don't step on other people, you know, other than that, yeah, be a little selfish yeah. is fine. <laughs> yeah, like we, we definitely want more people to be selfless, but sometimes, you know, being, sometimes it feels good to do good. So there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong yeah. with feeling good about helping people, about, you know, any of the stuff that we're doing that you, like I'm, I'm happy that I'm helping people. I'm really proud of that, that I'm having an impact and able to share people's stories like yourself. And I want to keep doing it. So, um, oh, I, want, I want to tell you another one, one little story. So after I got, when I was in Norway and I got dogs, I was in the tabloid newspaper. So Norway is uh, six hours behind Malaysia, right? So there was things were, so when I got, uh, you know, I was in the newspaper and then it appeared on TV as well. They mentioned my name on TV and, uh, and then other people,
talked about me and there was like a, somebody talked about oh she's dying she's in a hospital and there's a picture of somebody on a hospital bed with all the machines right and nowhere six hours behind so people were texting me are you okay are you in the <laughs> hospital and yeah. i was like i woke up like what the <laughs> no i'm alive <laughs> i'm alive and well not in hell yet you know they were saying oh she's in hell whatever death door so what happened was that just a lie or was it missing yeah somebody just created a block took somebody's <laughs> picture somewhere so it was, it was, I, at that by that time i thought it was kind of hilarious you know <laughs> yeah anyway so yeah but but I was still kind of like in between. I left Malaysia, went to Norway, and it didn't really work out. Norway is a very introverted country, you know, like yeah. not like America. <laughs> so yeah. I felt like, you know, like uh, uh, after a couple of years, I had to leave. I was becoming still depressed. I left it all behind, but the depression didn't really leave me yet. I was still, you know, in between. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so oh, and Ooh. at that time, after that, that was in 2014. So there was a bigger ex exposure from before. So, and then uh, people were making police reports against me. Um, so they, they were like, I saw some video on YouTube, uh, you know, like people taking pictures. Oh, these are the police reports against this girl, Julie Dalaludin for saying bad things about Islam on the internet, whatever, you know, like so many. And then like, uh, they even, there was like a press conference with the police, but it was for something else. But they asked, so what are you going to do about this person who's, who, you know, say these things on the internet about Islam? Um, and then the, the guy said, oh, we are, we understand that she is currently overseas and we will investigate accordingly. Just a standard response. I don't think they were going to do anything. But I do sincerely believe that if I was in Malaysia at that time, they would take me in, you know, slap me around a little bit, take my phone away, take my computer away, just to teach me a, a bit of a lesson. You know, like they won't, nobody will kill me. We're not like those people in Pakistan or Bangladesh or Saudi. But I, I do believe that, you know, they would do something just to make your life a little bit harder so you would lay down, lay low for a while. So, do, so did you get another question was, did you get any death threats? On the internet all the time. I mean, <laughs> uh, these days uh, get, because I kept ignoring them, you know. So, yeah. but back then, yeah. Uh, when I was in Norway, this guy was like, "I'm gonna come look for you and kill you." So I posted a picture of my house and I give my address. Okay, I'm waiting. <laughs> I know. I mean, you know, he couldn't afford a flight to Norway. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> So yeah, like it's always a death threats, rape threats, you know. But uh, this, you know, I just ignore them, and these days, no, no more. Um, but I'm also getting less and less controversial these days. So yeah, yeah, I, I find the same thing with me too. I um, when I first came out, I think you know what I think. I think that this is a tactic used that people try. And eventually they just give up because they realize it doesn't yeah. work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's scare tactic, you know. They just want you to come back, and then when that doesn't, you know, first they say, oh, we just want you to come back to Islam. Nope. <laughs> you know, you you know you um darah murtad halal dibuno, which means the blood of uh, apostate can be shed. That they teach you that even as a child. So you oh, know that you can be killed for being a murtad. Oh yeah. <laughs> Wow. Uh, you know, uh, you we can kill you for this. Nope, steal them, steal them with that. You know, like okay, you can we can rape you. Nope, you know, like and then yeah, they just gave up eventually, I guess. So yeah, same thing happened to me. Um, and and I don't. I'm. I mean, the doxing is a real issue. Like that's not just online sets. Online sets are online. I don't. I don't consider online sets to be credible unless they're credible. Like if someone said, you live here and and this guy is in Canada, I would immediately go to the police. I would immediately uh, go yeah. to the police. Yeah. But like, if it's like yeah. online, those are like easy and yeah. do that. it doesn't cost anything and there's no yeah. staking. If someone's staking it, meaning mm -hmm. they come to me in real life or something, then that's a different story. Yeah. Real life doxing though, like what happened to you, the real harassment, that's real. That's yeah. you suffered for that. Yeah. I've never, uh, yeah, not in in real life, and in when I was in Malaysia, I've, 
you know, because I knew I was leaving and um, I, I was, but still I was being careful not to disclose my locations and I was staying in apartment with uh, guards and it's, you know, oh, okay. so, so uh, yeah, but yes, I was afraid of it, but it never really amounted to that. And when I was overseas, most of these threats are online and coming from Malaysia. So I do not really pay attention to it. But yes, you're right. If it was somebody in the same state as I am, that would be uh, different. Yeah. Yeah. So um, the same thing with me. Like, I don't think, I'm trying to think, do I even get death threats anymore? I think randomly I do. I don't even care. Like, I'm just like, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <you're still scared. laughs> but, but what is, what does, affect me and affected you is the doxing thing is real because I, I you don't want people to know where I live um as also being I was called my company was called so I, I work as a software developer I the company that I work at was called up and stuff so that's a real harassment in real life now I work at a different company and nobody knows where I work which is good I'm not going to tell anybody <laughs> so that'll be <laughs> safe for now um it's it's uh it's definitely a real risk to being you know online and you know even if you don't call yourself an activist you are an activist because you did these things and you were trying to help people and <laughs> by doing that you're automatically an activist and you're automatically okay. a threat of being doxxed of being <laughs> harassed of being cancelled yeah. you know and the more yeah. popular you get the more risk is involved because the thing is this when you when you're a small person when you're a small small fish not that many people know you but as you get bigger the chances of crazy yeah. people finding uh -huh. you and what happens with the crazy people is they they're like psychopaths they will not psychopaths but these yeah. crazy people they will attach themselves to you and they will continue doing it because they're mentally unstable yeah. and as you get bigger <laughs> and bigger you get more of these like little sticklers they, they stick on you and they won't leave you alone right and one of those people is one of the people that got involved and called my company and wanted to dox me and whatever whatever but as you get bigger you get more of these crazy people mm. right unfortunately mm. they exist in all populations yeah, yeah 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 anyway but, uh, yeah, is, I, yeah but i do believe that um malaysians the, the asians they are not like uh, the, the muslims in the middle east you know yeah. oh the most you know, softer they, Yes, yeah, they, they talk like that, you know, oh, we want to come and, you know, but I don't think they, you know, they really, I, they have the heart to actually, you know, do it. Like they were talking about, um, uh, in, you know, implementing hudud in Malaysia. We don't have hudud. We have Shania Akkad, but we don't, they only handle like things like um, marriage and, um, you know like a uh, uh, property settlement but but not criminal cases so like they were talking about that like, my state wanted to implement hudud and so like if you steal you get your hand cut off right um uh and then they were talking about oh we want to implement hudud we gotta talk talk to uh doctors and surgeons to do it for us so then when they somebody steals something they're gonna cut it nicely like are you crazy <laughs> if you don't have if you don't have the courage to take, pick up the sword and cut it off yourself, then stop talking about it. You know, like I, I can't do it. So I, I, I wouldn't want to do it. Even if somebody stole something, I don't want to cut off somebody's hands, you know? Yeah. So, so to me like that, uh, things like that make me believe that Asians, they are softer people. They may talk about it, but they don't really mean it, you know, like, so I'm not really scared because of that. You know? like, and uh, Fatally Honest is asking, um, does Ase have hudud? I don't know if I said the name right. I don't know about cutting of hands, but they, uh, I saw some... like I think there's a caning or what? something, right? Caning adults. Yeah, they, 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 they do have some caning and, you know, like yeah. arresting women for dressing immodestly. Uh, you know, Ace is in Indonesia, right? So. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I was, I'm not familiar. Uh, so Malaysia is here, Indonesia, okay. this uh, Sumatra, the island, and it's in the north part. Okay. It's kind of like, a, to me, like it's like a sister state to my home state. They like compete with each other. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, but they, they have caning. Okay. They, they, I think at one time they wanted to get independence from Malaysia and they wanted to have like a separate, you know, governing. And then there, there were wars or something oh, okay. yeah, between them and the, the rest of Indonesia. And uh, so, like, uh, the Indonesia, well, they are a part of Indonesia, but Jakarta, like, uh, let them do their own thing, let them have a little 
in the you know um to do what they want so that to prevent any more wars from happening so mm -hmm. yeah well okay i want to thank you julie this has been a great okay. conversation um <laughs> a lot of people were looking forward to this and I, I didn't mention in the beginning but i've known you on facebook for many many years now uh you i think you, i ran into you when i first left islam back in 2015 2016 and uh i've followed you i found a like-minded soul you know I was yeah, happy to, yeah. <laughs> to get in touch with you and i'm glad that we finally got time to sit down and actually have this conversation for people to hear yeah, I, think story, I, yeah. <laughs> I think when i first added you on facebook or you added me i forgot but um at that time you just you just kind of like left Islam only like one or two years or something. Yeah. So is it? <laughs> and then seeing you now that you have a podcast, I'm very, you know, like your name is up there with the other uh, Murtads talking about it, it's, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, I'm happy. Like I said, I'm happy to keep doing this. I, I think it's very really important that these stories keep coming out um we are dealing with you know we're fighting a totalitarian system that tells people that their lives are for allah the hereafter mm -hmm. is for allah and whatever they spend is going to go to this giant paradise or whatever it's, it's going to be avoided so we have an uphill battle right and and you know i do believe that many people because they're born into islam by default, you, we have an uphill battle. We need to yeah. go against something that has been in them since childhood, right? Not everyone's questioning individual. Not everyone has the skepticism, skeptic mind to be able to really find the way out of this. So it's a difficult journey. And if you want the world to be a better place, we want people to continue to have the right to live whatever religion they want to, to marry whatever they want, whoever they want to, or to live with without marriage. Or, you know, those that life that we have is so precious and everyone has should be in charge of their own life so it's something important and you know you've you've made a great impact you started many years before when the risks <laughs> were much higher and yeah. in malaysia where I, the risks are much higher you know i, I want to add one more thing uh, bef before i forget um uh, make it quick um yeah. in, in malaysia we have like i mentioned we have the we have the civil law and we have the sharia law so so islam does does, does have a lot of influence on politics mm -hmm. even though it's because we have 60 percent muslim and the rest are non-muslims yeah. and the sharia court in malaysia is only only take care of things like marriages and property uh, you know division um but technically we who are people who are born muslim like me we cannot leave islam it's uh, you know you can try they say oh, okay you can fill up the form and submit it and then like, years later after you you've lost money to pay for lawyers whatever they, you know like people have tried and they got rejected and so what they do is that they just leave the country like i do you know so um uh and and it, but another thing is some, sometimes you know like non-muslims they want to marry muslim so they converted to islam so but then it didn't work out and then um they, they want to leave islam for them they have a chance to leave um but still it would take years and it would take lots of money to, to, but eventually they, they would be allowed um, uh, to leave islam um but there's also a problem like uh custody battle alimony you know like because they they converted to islam and married this muslim guy who's not so you know a nice person and then they leave and then it's so hard for them as a non-muslim uh to get you know like to fight custody alimony at the sharia court when you know mm -hmm. there are this kind of problem and also like especially for women i've heard laws and lots of stories about these muslim women who want to get a divorce in malaysia they have to go to the sharia court and uh, for men if they want a divorce they just say the words i divorce you and then you yeah. go to the court and the court will like okay you said it sign and then you're divorced but for muslim women if the men uh, don't want to divorce them they have to go to court for years and then they will say okay go to counseling first and then 10 years later it still haven't been settled so i've heard lots of stories about that so it's very unfair system to many people mm, <laughs> so, that's that's a good point we didn't yeah. talk about that but the yeah the Sharia, Sharia law courts, um, you know, if you were talking about something else and you said apartheid system, it's kind of like an apartheid system if, if yeah, you're giving non Muslims yeah. and Muslims different yeah. rights, um, especially women and men even have different rights in Islam. Yeah. 
Um, and it's unfortunate that, you know, hopefully we will get, you know, as time goes by, Malaysia yeah. will get more in line with the secular system, a system that gives everyone the rights, no matter what the religion, no matter what the gender even, right? So um, that would be yeah, the, for the best. There was there was a case, uh, this uh, Indian lady, he got married to a Muslim guy, and then like the guy uh, ran away with their kid, like a baby, and now the kid is like, 10 years old or something or maybe older and she couldn't see the she couldn't see the girl and she went to court and even though the i, I forgot like civil court awarded custody for her but then the guy just took the kid away and then sharia court tends to side with the muslims so oh um, there's, there's so, a lot of cases like that so yeah yeah <laughs> So again, thank you so much, Julie. This has been a wonderful conversation and I appreciate all that you've done for you know, ex-Muslims and for human rights and secular rights, democracy, all of that. Um, for everyone that's watching, thank you. Thank you to the, the uh, moderators who kept the chat clean and was, were keeping uh, the conversation flowing. Thank you to everyone that joined today, to the to the whole uh, friendly ex-Muslim family. I appreciate all you guys. If you'd like to support the channel, do consider joining. You can either join on YouTube below or you can join on pa Patreon. Uh, giving a small monthly donation helps me to eventually do this full time, which is a goal. At the moment, I do have to work. Unfortunately, I, I need to keep <laughs> limit the time on this project to what it is. Uh, but I do think that at some point, I'd love to do this full time. So if you can contribute a small amount monthly, it would be appreciated. If not, that's okay as well. Leave a uh, thumbs up below, give five star review on iTunes, all of that helps. And uh, check out Julie's blog. Her story is amazing. If you want to hear more, read more about her, she's not that active right now. Any last words from you, Julie? Um, I, uh, some people ask me if they could ask questions or whatever. I say I wasn't yeah. sure about the the format of the podcast or yeah. whatever. But you're going you're going to upload this video on YouTube, right? Yes, it's going to be uploaded on YouTube at the same link, and as well, it okay. will also be available on the podcast. So if anyone wants to listen to it, on you know, and without having to actually have the phone open or whatever, you can actually download the podcast by searching for Friendly Ex Muslim Podcast on any podcast app okay i will I, I will post whatever on my wall and all i wanted to say was because some people say they want to ask questions and then i'll try to read the comments and give some answers awesome if, yeah yes, i'll do yes. that so and um maybe hey, 400 <laughs> thumbs up yeah, yeah. <laughs> You know, maybe we will um, do another one. Someone mentioned in the chat that we should get a bunch of uh, you guys, Malaysian ex-Muslims together. So you, Fatally Honest, um, I mentioned to you, Omera. So there's quite a few of you now having to be, yeah. we can get all yeah, of you Yeah, more and more people are being open about that's what I want. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, what would they say? Standing in the, on the shoulder of giants, whatever. Yeah. So <laughs> I, you know, people before me, now other people, you know. So yes, yes, God. exactly. All right, so don't yep. don't hang up just yet, and I'm gonna end oh. the broadcast. To everyone else, we'll see you at the next live stream, which is going to be tomorrow night, the Epileptic Prophet Part Two. We'll see you then, and uh, thank you, Julie. Thank you, everyone. Bye for now. Oh, thank you for giving me the opportunity. Absolutely, it's been wonderful. <laughs> All right. All right.